Hello all, my name is Ivan Bibiano. I'm a freshman at the University of Arkansas, and my hometown is 30 to 35 minutes up the hill, so over in Bentonville, Arkansas. Luckily, that means I get all the access I need to Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and whenever my time allows me, I go over there and just visit my favorite pieces of art, and so far I would have to say that my favorite is the work that I'm going to be presenting, which would be Agnes Pelton's Divinity Lotus. So it would be nice to first talk about Agnes Pelton as a person. She was a student of theosophy, and theosophy is basically the study of the philosophy of religion, uh, or basically just the philosophy of divinity and the nature of having a religious spirit. What was really interesting about being able to study this piece is that it basically occurred at a midpoint in her uh, artistic career where she was shifting from the more imaginative pieces of art that focused a lot on balancing light and other uh, aspects of nature and moving more toward the actual naturalistic concepts that she finds in the, the deserts and the environments that she was surrounded by uh, throughout her life and eventually toward more abstract concepts. And so it's nice to see that our piece is called Divinity Lotus because it in fact does combine these aspects of nature, uh, these biotic factors, as well as her own views on spirituality and divinity. One of the first things that we can look at in this piece is its directionality. It's very obvious that the lines in this piece are trying to shoot straight upward. If not, they're lamenting slowly downward. And what's interesting to note is that this directionality adds to the symmetry of this piece. Uh, if you look at the center, you do see some diagonal slopes that run parallel and perpendicular to each other. It seems like those would conflict with the theme of symmetry, but they're arranged in such a way that they actually form a certain cylindrical or even conical shape, and that general amalgamation, looking further away, does actually add to the sense of symmetry in the piece. What's more, we can look at the colors that are presented in, in um, Divinity Lotus. We have, obviously, this very white glow presented uh, against a straight black. It's a very uh, stark contrast, but if you look at it even further, we have some light blue outlines, and this blue varies a lot. It, is, it appears to be even solid right at the base of this white globe, but as you move further down, it dissipates into a sort of mist, a little wisp of flavor that sort of glimpses over the surface of the lotus flower. The lotus flower itself seems to be kind of submitting to the darkness. It has this very deep, uh, dark patch of pink on one of the petals. But in contrast, the petal behind it seems to be the lightest shade of pink, seems to be the least saturated, the most bathed in light. What we might do now is use the approach of semiology to assess this artwork. The painting contains signs that aren't necessarily pertinent to Agnes Pelton, but are really universal symbols that anyone can understand just from being a human. The lotus flowers are just plants, but it's their symmetrical appeal and their natural aesthetic that draws the attention of any person. Light is a sign of clarity. It conveys being able to perceive all the other colors, and the most popular religions in today's world show that light is a symbol of divinity, especially when it's in contrast to darkness. Again, another sign, but of danger and fear. So these signs are all present in Divinity Lotus, and they're also universally accessible that it sort of leaves little credit for Pelton's skill. It's kind of like she just copied and pasted these symbols. But she makes it clear, as a theosophist, that her artwork isn't necessarily supposed to convey a certain meaning, She's really just trying to use her art as a bridge that will allow other people to discover their own personal revelations. All these observations about Divinity Lotus make it pretty clear that her art is imaginative and metaphysical. It's definitely transcendental art. And it's interesting because her works came at a time when social realism and regionalism were taking the stage, showing the tense reality of early 20th century America. So I can see why people might really not have understood this piece. Now me personally, I am a biology major. Uh, I like looking at living things, and even though I'm definitely more grounded than Agnes Pelton was, I love looking at the symbols in her art and explaining why they are important to us biological beings. If there was a piece of art that I could say really inspired me to appreciate this, this subject more, I would definitely say that it's the Divinity Lotus.